All right, today we have Allison 1000 tore apart just the rear part because I've had a few people ask about changing theirs from two wheel drive to four wheel drive or, you know, four wheel drive back to two wheel drive. And if it's difficult, if it's possible, if it's cheaper just to buy an entire two wheel drive transmission core, well, that all depends on how much you can source the parts for. Um, the updated four wheel drive housings are expensive. So if you can find a four wheel drive core complete that's not damaged, that may be your better route if you're going from two to four. Now going from four wheel drive back to two wheel drive, had a guy that he was going to a divorce transfer case set up. I have a two wheel drive core, swapping parts, basically for the price of gaskets, whatnot, and a little bit of labor for him. Uh, no big deal. That was, you know, it's going to work out pretty good for him for what he's doing. So electronically, if you have a GM pickup truck, uh, this is in particular is an early five speed. Um, the TCM in the program does not need to be changed. Now for four wheel drive low, there's, I would have to look up the pin number. There is a signal that has to be sent to the TCM when four low is engaged. So that way it can correct its gear ratios because two wheel drive trucks, they're going to get output speed on the back of the transmission four wheel drive trucks do not so they use output speed on the transfer case so there's a little extension harness that goes in between there on four wheel drive trucks now to swap parts back and forth uh, this is our p3 here planetary um, keep this with whatever transmission it came out of don't change that you know, that's a war into the gear set and your sun gear back here. Uh, keep all that stuff. But the switching back and forth, the only thing you're going to need is the housing, the output shaft, and the yoke to go to two wheel drive. Um, you can see the tone wheel and the shim is back in there already. You know, to get that stuff out, you got to pull all these uh, bearings. But so we're going to leave that for him. Let him deal with that. If he wants to do it whatever um so the four-wheel drive you're going to get a spacer like this that sits over the output shaft then you have your shim these are available in different thicknesses to adjust your end play um, so output shaft goes on the sun gear your main shaft just like this then that planetary will go in here and then on a two-wheel drive setup, remember you don't have the spacer on a two-wheel drive setup. But if you're going four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, this spacer and shim would go on there. And then you put the housing on and torque it. Then you have this style nut on the output shaft. Um, I don't recommend reusing these. This is a nylon nut. Those are supposed to be one-time use. I've seen people lock tight them, whatever. Hell, I've even pulled some of them apart and they were only torqued to like... Uh, it couldn't have been like 20 foot pounds and anyway uh and then you'll need a socket like this there's the part number this is a kent moore 43769 if you need one borrow one from your buddies whatever autozone might rent you one no idea so that's the basic on swapping these back and forth and the differences um the mounting locations so when you're swapping these back and forth on the trucks the mounting location for the cross member, that's the same, so you do not have to change that. Um, obviously, the drive shaft is different. Two wheel drive trucks are going to have uh, a carrier. Some of the longer four wheel drive trucks will also have a carrier, but you know, that's we're not dealing with that right now. So, if you have any questions, just uh, ask in the comments, I suppose.